everybody. It's great to see you again. We're going to finish up our series on courage today and talk about the necessity to have courage to act. You know, sometimes it's our lack of courage that can actually limit what God wants to do through us. We fail to lay hands on the sick, for example, and God can't do a miracle. We fail to cast out a demon and God cannot set somebody free. The gospel, my friends, is not just in words. You and I know that. It's also in our actions. We can preach a message, but if we don't follow up with a demonstration of what that message is all about, our impact is very much limited. This is the mandate that Jesus gave to all of us, his disciples, including us, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 to 8. As you go, says Jesus, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But it doesn't stop there. He continues and he says, Then heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Why? Freely you have received, freely give. The best example I can think of the, the disciples putting that very thing into action is the account of Peter and John when they go to the temple in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. They encounter this lame man who's begging for money and Peter says, look at us. He's not afraid to make the kingdom known through what he's carrying. And he says, even though I don't have silver or gold on me right now, what I do have, I want to give it to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And there you have it. The man is healed. He stands up. He's shouting and dancing and leaping for joy. And he's praising God. And everybody who sees it is totally surprised. They are filled with wonder and amazement. Why? Because those disciples had the courage to act. Peter's courage was triggered by two things. A heart of generosity and a heart of compassion. His heart was saying, you know, I've been given so much, I want to share it with the people in the world who are lost and suffering. That comes from knowing a God of compassion, knowing a God of mercy, knowing a God of abundance, and wanting to be like Him. You see, your conviction can feed your courage, but also your compassion and your generosity feeds courage as well. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, My gospel, or my message, didn't come to you with persuasive words of wisdom, but rather in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. The word demonstration has a very important meaning. It means to give a practical or concrete exhibition, to clearly show the existence of something, or to reveal evidence of the truth. Demonstration in the case of the gospel means that we're not just sharing a message. We are sharing a truth that has a concrete impact in people's lives. And that's why we need courage to act, not just to speak. God is giving you courage today, my friends. He is saying, take courage. Be the people I've called you to be in order that you can manifest the fullness of my kingdom where I place you and where I send you. He's training you to be led by the Holy Spirit. He wants to take you to people and to places where he wants to reveal himself. So your courage actually gives the kingdom of God visibility. Think about that. It goes way beyond just believing, just speaking about something. God today is imparting to you the courage to act. And when you do, you will be amazed by the fruit that you see, by the impact that you have, and by the way your life gives him great glory and great pleasure. We'll continue on a different series next month, so I'll see you then.